Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Sitting out here in the boat, I figured I'd do a quick tip for you after yesterday's Wednesday nighter. Uh, Hank Duke and I ended up winning it. It was a good tournament. We caught all of our fish on hover rigs. Uh, I caught mine on a heavier prototype flipping version right here with a Berkeley Max Scent Creature Hog. Hank caught his fishing, where's his rod? Oh, he caught his on a hover rig with a Zayco, the 364th ounce size. Uh, he was going through baits just randomly picking ones out. Ended up catching big bass of the tournament on that, so it was a pretty exciting little night. But I wanted to give you one tip, and I've talked about this before on the channel, how much I like to use dye when fishing rivers specifically or darker water. I feel like a lot of times if you can add a little bit of orange or chartreuse to your baits, that can be something that makes your bait stand out. Now, you could go the route of buying a bait like this Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw that already has orange legs on a green pumpkin body. Not a bad route to go, but it's also uh, sometimes a little bit more overpowering in in the amount of orange and at the same time if you want green pumpkin you gotta buy a bag of green pumpkin if you want to buy green pumpkin orange legs you gotta buy green pumpkin orange legs so the point that i'm getting at here is a lot of people end up using some form of a dye if they want to change the color of their baits <clears throat> it's something that i was doing a little bit i like to add just a little bit of that orange dye on the tips of my craws of my creature hog. And the creature hog, one of the nice things about it is the max scent material doesn't absorb the dye as well as some other baits. And I like that because it means the dye is toned down. It's more of a natural color versus being overly bright and overly brilliant to the point where it almost, I think, can be somewhat of a distractor, or at least in my opinion, in my head, it makes me say, no, I don't like the way that looks. I like it to be more natural looking, especially when I'm talking about chartreuse. When I use chartreuse on green pumpkin, especially that max scent, you don't really get chartreuse, you get more of a lime green. And the reason I like that lime green is because that lime green to me looks a lot like uh, a turquoise tail or green tail that you see on bluegills or sunfish a lot of the times. But that's not the tip. None of this is the tip, even though I feel like I just gave you a couple of tips. <clears throat> the tip that I want to give you is something that I very rarely see people do. And that's to use dye on their jig skirts. Oftentimes, people will be dyeing their plastics, but very rarely do you ever hear somebody talk about actually putting dye on the jig skirts. And one reason I really like to do this is I can be very meticulous as to where I'm putting the dye on the skirts. So I can choose to put it just on the belly. I can choose to put it just on the tips. I can put the dye on the top. I can use multiple different dyes. If I want to put a little bit of chartreuse in, in, you know, on a few strands, a little bit of orange on some strands, I can do that. Generally speaking, though, what I like to do is take a little bit of the material from all over the place. So I'll let the bait fall. I'll kind of pull the skirt down and then I'll start pulling some of that material back up because I don't want I don't want all of the skirt uh, to get orange dye or chartreuse dye. So I'll start kind of just weeding some out. So I'm left with, I'm going to say, I don't know, a quarter, a third of the strands. And at that point, I'll take my dye and I very rarely dip it in the dye. Generally, do what I do is I actually take the bottle, turn it over take the top off, carefully put the bottle down. You don't want to spill it, but now I've got a little bit of dye in the top. And then at that point, I just kind of dunk the tails in it until I get the, the amount that I want. <clears throat> so you can see I've got a bunch of random dye there. And again, because I'm dyeing it versus just buying, say, an Alabama Craw colored jig which has a ton of orange in it that's not what i want i like that color but it's a little bit more bright than what i'd like so in this case 
I want it more toned down. So I'll let that dry a little bit, shake it out, and now I'll let all the rest of the material fall. And I've just added some nice orange hue to the bottom of it. It gives the bait a little bit of color. It's a really easy way to add color to your jigs without being overpowering, without having to put too much skirt color in, because that's one thing a lot of people don't realize about jigs. Most jig manufacturers have, especially the big ones, have some of the skirt makers make them, make them the jig skirts, but those jig skirts have to be made with so many actual strands of each specific color. So if you're looking for say an Alabama craw color, which is green pumpkinish colors with orange, generally you're gonna have at least a half a tab of orange, which to me, a half a tab after it falls back over itself is a good portion. That's like a quarter of your jig is orange. That's more than I generally want. So you can't always get a, a simple color selection from a jig maker because they have to buy in so much bulk from a skirt maker that needs to put so much of each color into a skirt. Now your custom jig makers will make you down to one strand if that's what you want. But this is a way for me to add a little bit of color into my jigs. I can take these, pair them up with the other jigs that the other trailers that I'm using and have a much more natural looking craw color. Cause for the most part, if you were to look at the crayfish that are swimming in your lakes, they don't have a pile of really bright orange. They may have a few little spots of orange, but that's about it. So this is something that, I, that I've done for a while. Very rarely do you hear people talking about dyeing their skirts on their jigs. It's always the trailers, but I think you might want to try dyeing the skirts because what that'll do too is it brings the trailer into the skirt better, especially if you put a little bit of dye on your trailer at the same time, it makes the whole bait really look as if it's one versus two separate parts. So that's something that I do. I figured I'd share it with you. It was something I was thinking about last night when I was dyeing the tips of my baits and I figured I'd pass it on to you guys. So hopefully you can use it to catch a few extra fish of your own. If you enjoyed this tip, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And stay tuned, we'll have a new tip video for you tomorrow.